so you probably saw my little teaser video that I released just before this one um, where I was actually <laughs> powered this guy up and uh, was trying it out uh, yeah I thought I'd just actually give a little update on where I'm at right now so as you saw in that video um, it was operating under its own power on the power supply I have it just kind of hooked into the uh, power inlet off my Variac uh, but I got the Variac turned up, so the power switch was what was controlling the power. Um, it's running on its own power supply now. The AM radio is working. I don't know uh, if it's tuned properly, uh, I don't because I don't have the glass on here, so I don't know if it's in the right position. It seems like uh, 780 was a little bit further over than I would expect, but uh, we'll see how it actually lines up. Uh, the short wave modes uh, they work as far as I can tell um, I don't have a shortwave antenna at this house I have one in my old house I was using it I have an old hammerland but uh, I'm guessing it probably works I, I may try to test it at some point um, but I don't know if Jeff even cares about uh, shortwave anymore there's not too many broadcasters that are sending out shortwave, but there's still a few. You can listen to China or Havana, Cuba if, uh, at the right times of night still putting out propaganda. Uh, anyway, um, the FM mode, I was not able to get that one to work uh, like it is right now. Uh, even when I connected the FM output to back to the input, it has this um, Stereo demultiplexer that's external, but even when I hooked it up directly, uh, I didn't get anything through. There's these little tabs here on the tuner knob for the FM tuner. I'm not sure what these... I haven't actually looked on the schematic to see what these are for, but they rub up against the knob. I don't know if that has anything to do with it, because I didn't have the knob on there. But, uh, yeah, I wasn't getting any audio at all from the FM section, so that's something I need to look at. Uh, the demultiplexer itself also needs a little bit of work. Uh, let me grab that. This is the DMUX. Uh, it's a separate component that sits off to the side. The audio comes in and it, it finds the stereo carrier, does the demultiplexing, and sends out a stereo signal. Um, both these tubes were weak. Uh, one had both sections. One had a, one tube had one good section, but that was only because that section is not used <laughs> in the circuit. Sometimes these double triodes they don't use both sides. There's there's two halves to it that are the same and uh, they don't always need both halves so uh, I want to replace this can because uh, this is really old and I don't know if it's any good but it's just a 50-50 so I'll just replace those with a couple 47's. Uh, this guy here, this 2 microfarad 150 volt, um, this is in the circuit there's actually some signal that gets coupled through it so I would need to look a little bit more closely to see if replacing this has any risk of messing up the alignment of this. I don't think so. I think it, it seems to be some sort of coupling uh, capacitor. So that should be alright. Or I may just leave it alone. So um, I know that Jeff had powered this up and the caps didn't explode. So I'm guessing that they're not, uh, they're reformed okay. I'm sure this guy's tired. And I will replace him. He's just for the power supply. It's an um, RC... Uh, a CRC uh, filter, to a capacitor resistor capacitor. Um, well you see all these adjustments, right? I mean, that's the alignment stuff that you just don't want to touch that. And if you change any of the other active components that are working with these uh, inductors that are adjustable, changing the caps because the tolerance, you know, isn't perfect. A, a new cap will have a slightly different um, actual value. Um, it can throw off the alignment of the circuit. So I don't think this cap applies, though. I think this is just a, being used to couple back some signal back to this triode. Uh, but I haven't looked at it that closely. So but I did replace both tubes with a couple of JJ tubes. Um, so that, that'll be the next little project. And then once that's working, um, I'll focus back on the FM side of this and see if I can get that working. Um, the Magic Eye tube works, as you saw in the video. Works like a charm. I found 
let me take you out of the stand here so you can get a closer look. I found a couple of uh, black belts, uh, rubber belts, to replace these. These are just for show, but I figured, you know, what the heck. The ones that were on there, they were like rubber bands. They were all dried up. Uh, but I looked online and I found some, uh, like, tape deck type neoprene belts for those. So those two are fixed. Um, see, all the orange caps were replaced. On here, the two that I missed. Uh, here's that volume knob I was talking about in one of my previous videos. So this right here, this whole thing is the back of the volume knob. There's three layers to it. Uh, the two stereo ones for the volume knob, and there's a balance control. And you can see there's orange caps here, orange caps down there, and then two what are now little black ones to replace those two that I melted accidentally. Uh, the balance control was seized up. Um, I kept just putting some penetrating oil in there and I managed to get it to move. It's still kind of stiff, but it, it does move and the balance does work. Uh, I sprayed all the pots with uh, what you call it, deoxid uh, fader stuff for the pots and all, this, all these millions of switches. All these things have a ton of contacts in them and they're all working fine now. Uh, and these controls work fine. The <laughs> so I, you know, all these these two switches on the ends are for these uh, bass and treble controls, and then they have various you know, like jazz mode and solo mode. I, I don't know what they were going for with that, but they just put different sort of equalizations into the circuit. Um, it's kind of a little wonky the way it works. Uh, you can just tell like when you have the volume really low, there's a lot of bass, and then it sort of fades out like a sort of like a loudness control. But it's I don't know, it's kind of excessive. Especially for AM, which tends to be kind of lo-fi, um, with you know a low-pass filter. So I don't know if that's correct, but as far as I can tell, everything is the way it's supposed to be now. Um, it definitely works fine, for the most part. I, and the other thing too is I'm using these these crappy old boombox speakers that I they're my test speakers that I you know I'm not worried about blowing those up if something goes wrong. Um, I think they're four ohm speakers, and the speaker setup for this console is it's got three speakers on each side, and they're put in series. So I don't know um, what the impedance is supposed to be, and it's probably wrong for this transformer. So I'm not too worried about it. I have a feeling when it's uh, hooked up to the correct speakers, it'll probably sound fine. Um, you heard, uh, so yeah, I can play. I play the CD through the tape loop. So this thing has uh, both a tape and a phono input. Uh, it uses these goofy uh, five pin DIN connectors, so I found, sorry, I'm going to put you back in the stand here, you're probably getting seasick. I found uh, found some of those on eBay and made up some cables. So it's got, uh, uses one for the phono inputs, and I, I use some nicer cable for that, and some metal connectors to for shielding. I know that Jeff has a replacement turntable, and I remember seeing that it had phono um, RCA outputs on it, not the 5-pin DIN. So I made a little converter cable. So I tested the phono input, and it works fine. Uh, I put a new tube in that position. Uh, the one had the one on there was kind of weak. Uh, the new one is a, uh, a Sovtech, which I mentioned before. These are nice, quiet tubes. There's no hum at all. It's dead quiet. Sounds great. Uh, I also made up another cable. Uh, also for the tape loop, it has it uses the same kind of five pin in, but the pinout is actually different. I don't know why. And then I just I cut an RCA cable in half, and so you got the the tape input and the tape output. Um, you can use this to loop in like other stereo equipment uh, since it's sort of line level. The phono input has, even though it's a it's a ceramic input. So it you know it takes kind of a line level source sort of, but it also boosts the bass on it. So uh, you know because it's a because it's for a, um, for playing vinyl. So uh, the tape doesn't have that bass boost, so you can use that to play any line level source through it. Um, it's a little weird though because it doesn't have. There's no actual tape mode. It's the there's just a stereo button that you press on here, and it'll do uh, phono or tape. And looking at the circuit, it, it looks like it, it'll it'll actually mix them. Uh, though I don't know for sure. It'll 
uh, as far as the impedance matching, I don't. <laughs> I haven't actually tried it. It'll be a little interesting, Jeff. I don't think you'll be able to record. So the record output on the tape loop is for the radio. I, it's not intended for the phono, so I don't think you'll be able to record records with your ceramic uh, turntable. But <laughs> I don't think you really care. So, um, but it could be handy for like looping in your other main system into this, so you could actually pipe music into there. So that's kind of why I figured I'd make that. Um, so that worked well. As you saw in the video, I was, I was just playing a CD on my disc, man. I, I use that also for uh, equipment I'm not sure about, because um, especially with high voltage tube stuff, uh, having this just battery operated thing not plugged into the wall uh, kind of saves if there's any boo-boos in the <laughs> in the circuit that would put high voltage on the input. Uh, worst case it would blow up the disc man, but more likely it would just float the disc man at a high voltage uh, and I wouldn't uh, damage my uh, other equipment that I have in my shop. So that's usually how I do that. Um, what else? Let's see. Oh yeah, I uh, modified the power inlet a little bit. So it um, I cleaned up the fuse contacts, put a new fuse in it, I installed this, uh, uh, it's a surge limiter. Basically it's a, it's a thermistor, it's like 120 ohms when it's cold, and then uh, the current from the outlet will pass through here into the transformer. And having a resistor in there will actually kind of lower the voltage, so the, the sort of surge of current that's going into the amp to, to power everything up, bring all the heaters up, and charge up the power supplies uh, has the series resistor which kind of lets it slowly softly bring that stuff up and then this thing heats up because it's got current flowing through it and because it's a thermistor the resistance goes down it goes down to below an ohm actually um, so it kind of takes itself out of the circuit it gets hot uh, and then sort of self-regulates and stays hot and sort of just takes itself out of the circuit that way so, so this will get toasty um, it's rated for two amps, and this fuse is a one amp fuse, and so it sh that should be fine, but it does get hot, so uh, be mindful of that if you're poking around. And uh, down here is another, it looks similar, it's a disc shaped black thing, it's a, it's a varistor, it's a, it's, a, it's a surge suppressor, it's what they put in power strips uh, for lightning protection, but uh, what, it, what they also can do is uh, when you hit the power, especially when turning it off, there can be a pop, you know, that you'll hear on the speakers or you'll hear it on other equipment. And this this will help suppress that, so that's why I put that there. Um, I replaced this tube. Uh, this is for the FM section. It was kind of weak and uh, notorious for these these FM sections are notorious for being hard in these tubes. You can still get these on eBay. It's pretty cheap. This is that uh, this is the phono stage tube that Sovtex one I showed. Uh, these two are still original. That one's original. I found an eBay tube for that. Uh, E80 ABC one, <laughs> forget the part number, but it's a common radio tube. Still get them. Uh, these are still original. Uh, so yeah, it sounds everything sounds good. The 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 amp section is sounds good and strong. So that was encouraging. Um, let's see what else. Oh, I can show you the power supply part. So there's a new power supply. Um, I was planning on actually making a little circuit board to hold it, and I was going to use that little strap that was there, but I just decided to use a terminal strip uh, instead. It just was easier. Um, so this is the capacitor that uh, Jeff had replaced uh, originally, which was fine. It was good size, and this is another one uh, that's at a different stage of the power supply. These are the diodes. They replaced that block thing that was in here, the rectifier. These are uh, these are called hex threads. They're um, they're fast, soft recovery type diodes, so it means the, when they switch on and off, they don't make as much noise as a normal diode. That's just to keep that area quieter. Um, and yeah, I don't hear anything at all in the RF section or the amp section. It's it's really quiet, so I was pretty happy about that. Um, so that's the only thing that's new under here. Everything else is uh, the same as I showed last time. Uh, all the capacitors and everything are doing fine. The the two resistors, those little green guys there, that I replaced, uh, they get a little warm, but not too bad. They're in a good spot. They shouldn't cook anything. 
Um, here's those belts I was talking about. And uh, so, yeah. So, what's left? Um, there's the FM stuff. I'm going to see if I can get that working properly. Um, the other thing, too, is behind the Behind the dial is this uh, piece of cardboard that was all warped. So I, I put it in a book to kind of flatten it, and it's it flattened out again. But I have a feeling it's going to warp again once it gets hot, just because that's kind of the natural thing it wanted to do. So I'm probably going to use this as a template and cut out a new one. Plus these tabs on top are uh, ripped off except for that one. So, um, so I'll make a new one of those. So thinking about maybe making one out of metal at one point. I was like, oh, I'll make it out of aluminum, and then then it would never warp again, but the concern with that is uh, right behind it here are the, see all these uh, coils here? These are these are the RF section of the, a, the AM parts of the tuner and the shortwave, and um, these are sensitive to what's around them, and actually, like, physically where the parts are. Like, you can, if you move a Capacitor, try to bend it out of the way. You'll actually change um, the the electrical alignment of all this. So putting a giant metal plate here probably isn't the best idea. So decided against that. I'm just going to make another cardboard one, and that should be fine. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. Uh, clean up the glass, put it all back together, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Hopefully, uh, getting real close here. So uh, anyway, I think we're coming to the end of the Telefunken project, and uh, thanks Jeff for your patience. I know this is taking a long time, but uh, I've uh, been slowly chipping away at it as I've had time. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, see you next time.